Hello everyone and welcome back to a professional match of StarCraft 2. Today it's time for a best of five series of Zerg versus Terran, where in game number one, we find ourselves on a good old Lightshade. So spawning here in the top left hand corner of the map and playing with the red Zerg drones, we have none other than Dark. And the opponent in the opposite corner with the blue SCVs from Germany, he goes by the name of Hero Marine. Now usually this is the part of the video where I like, you know, introduce the players and I talk a little bit more about them. But honestly at this point, I don't think either of these two really need any additional introduction, right? Hero Marine, very good, one of the very best from Europe. Dark, very good, one of the very best from South Korea. I've actually been thoroughly impressed though, especially by Dark over the last couple of weeks. So this particular series was played during the TSL 7. I think that was about three weeks or so ago. A couple of you reached out and mentioned that apparently this one is really fun, so we'll find out exactly what ended up going down in this best of five. Uh, but once again, Dark is looking very impressive. I mean, I mentioned this quite literally in yesterday's video. So spoiler alert, I guess if you... Uh, well, not yesterday's video. I'm not gonna spoil yesterday's video, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna spoil a little bit of his GSL run. Um, very recently in the GSO Codes semi-finals, Dark ended up winning over Parting 4-0, which is ridiculous. Like, a 4-0 victory in the semi-finals is uncommon, and, I mean, I want to talk more about it, but I don't want to spoil the rest of the event for you. Uh, but basically what I'm trying to get at is that Dark is once again looking in tip-top shape, probably better than he's ever been. And, I mean, not that long ago, the man was considered to be the world champion of StarCraft 2. So we'll see exactly how well Mr. Big Gabe is gonna fare against Dark currently. Because my money, I mean, I haven't, I, I don't know who ends up winning this, right? I haven't seen these games. Uh, but my money at this point would be on Dark, because Dark has just been super impressive once again. That being said, never count out Hero Marine. Hero Marine, just a stock standard Terran macro player. He is very fond of going for those parade pushes through the center of the map, so... Maybe that's what separates him a little bit, uh, a little bit from, say, for example, a Clem or, for example, a Bjorn. Those guys will usually go for heavy drop harass and just lots of multitasking in general. Hero Marine, you know, he will just charge through the center of the map and set the rally point to the other side if he feels like he can get an advantage that way, uh, which is a little bit of a deviation. Either way, six Zerklings here in total from Dark, which is kind of interesting. Respecting uh, Hero Marine certainly quite a bit. The norm is to go for four of them, but uh, I guess with six, you shouldn't you shouldn't lose any Zerklings, right? Losing a Zerkling here would actually be kind of bad for him. Either way, it's going to be a quick triple hatch opener right here from Dark, whereas our Terran player right now is going to go for the quick third command center as well. So broadly speaking, Terran has a couple different ways of opening up. The most common one is to go for the barracks, into the command center, into the factory, the starport, and then the third command center. Or they can go for the barracks, into a command center, into a factory, into a starport. Or sorry, into a command center and then a starport. So it's either like a 1-1, one, one, third CC, 1, or 1-1-1, one, 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 right? And for a long time we just saw the, uh, the really quick starport variant. As to why people have decided to start going for a quick third CC instead, I think the main reason for it is just that Zerg players have gotten very good at not dying to stupid stuff. Especially these top level Zergs, they don't really take that much damage from like Liberator Harass or Benchy Harass or Raven Harass or what else you have, right? Battlecruiser openers. Uh, those have all fallen a little bit out of favor just because Zerg players have gotten really good at defending with it and in order to... Uh, yeah, stay, stay up with the Zerg's economy. It seems like a good idea to, at the very least, focus on uh, a third command center a little bit quicker. He's still going to go for the Benchy approach here, by the way, which I really like. A couple reasons why I'm a fan of this. So first off, he's going up against Dark, right? Now, Dark is very well known. Like, Dark was playing Roach Ravager way before it was, like, you know, what, what the cool kids did, right? Uh, or what the cool kids do, rather. He, he's been doing it for a long time. And it turns out if you go for a Roach Ravager opener... Um, and your opponent rushes out a couple of benches. I mean, quote-unquote rushes out, right? He, he's going for quick benches after opening up triple CC. Either way, um, obviously roaches and ravagers, they can't really shoot up other than corrosive biles. And in general, going for the bench opener, it's nice to uh, yeah make sure you don't die to those roach ravager pushes. But you can also obviously put on quite a bit of pressure against the Zerg player. Just forcing out a couple of spore crawlers alone actually is already quite nice. All right. So usually the way that this matchup works is that the Terran player is going to try and slow down the Zerg player in every way that they can. Be it with worker harassment, be it with unit harassment, be it with picking off queens, be it with killing overlords. 
be it with slowing down the creep spread, right? Slowing down the creep spread is huge as well. The reason as to why Terran players usually play this matchup more aggressively in the early game than Zerg players do is because of that larva mechanic, right? So while Terran is limited right now to making one SCV per base, Zerg can power out a lot of those workers very, very quickly. So Dark has decided to go for the 1-1 approach, which is actually quite greedy. I'm personally a big fan of playing this build myself, so usually if you go for the 1-1 approach, you can finish up your upgrades really early. However, on the downside, right, or the downside of this opener is that you don't really get bailing speed until much later. So a lair starts up right now with the next bunch of gas and then also a bailing nest. I don't really like this, uh, this position too much on the bailing nest, to be honest. I feel like that could get easily picked off, especially since Terrans are very fond of going for a push through this choke. Either way, um... It's one of those things where, um, yeah, your bane speed is going to be late, so, like, timing attacks with the tearing units here can be quite painful. Also, the Spore Crawler positioning here is quite interesting. Yeah, so six workers here is not bad at all, assuming he keeps all of this alive. He could even attempt going for the freaking spawning pool if he wants to, to be honest. Even this base will be denied for a little bit longer. Hellions at the same time are trying to harass, I guess. Love this. This is good. Getting rid of, like, what was that, five creep tumors? Or, well, yep, five creep tumors uh, for one scan. I think that's a pretty good deal. Slowing down the Zerg player is basically the main goal here. So those follow-up pushes with Marines will be a little bit more powerful. The most common follow-up that we see from here from uh, the Terran players is to go for the 1-1, one -one, the Stim Pack, and the Combat Shield. And then once those upgrades finish up. So this is really nice here. Yeah, Gabe is, uh, Gabe is showing some really stellar gameplay, man. I feel like a lot of people look at the names here in a game like this, Dark versus Hero Marine, and I will immediately think, okay, this is going to be easy peasy for Dark, right? I feel like a lot of people don't value Gabe nearly as highly as they deserve. Hero Marine is actually really, really freaking good. Like, everyone's always talking about Clem, right? And I'm probably guilty of that as well, but uh, there's no denying that uh, Hero Marine does not mess around. Now, would you look at that, actually? Dark, he's finished up 1-1, and he knows the timing at which Terrans apparently like to go for a push, Right around the 7 minute mark is when he runs in against this triple CC opener with the Lynx. At the same time though, Terran is pushing across the map. There is a siege tank over here. Not that much creep either, so you know what? This army over here from the Zerk is being cleaned up. Turns out if you have all your Zerklings on the other side of the map, this may become a bit of a disaster. Reinforcing Terran units should be able to get rid of those Zerklings instead of the natural expansion. 10 SCVs in total here, especially with those mules, shouldn't really be that big of a deal. And that means that Hero Marine right now certainly has a chance to potentially get more damage done. Terran has not started up 2-2 just yet. Zerk has. Dark actually also now forced to use those queens here for base defense for a while, so he's missed a bunch of injects. Meaning that right now he doesn't actually have enough larva generation to actually uh, produce all of the Zerklings and spend his money. Beautiful darting back and forth here. By the Terran. Once again, Zerkling's going in for the counterattack. Recognizes this slow push that a Terran is going for. And once more, there's mm, there's actually quite a few Terran units available. I thought that maybe the reinforcements already went across the map. Upon seeing it, though, immediately Hero Marine pushes deeper onto the creep. Siege tanks over here, not surrounded just yet. And these links will be pushed back. This time around, they're gonna come back, though, in the form of Bane links. Losing this fourth base, by the way, is actually a bit of a disaster for uh, the Zerk. The Zerg can't really afford going 3 base versus 3 base very well, especially when playing Link Bane. Unless he gets really big, um, really big uh, Baneling detonations. Speaking of which, oh, 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 15 SCVs end up going down. That does make this a bit more of an all-in, but I'm looking at this army and I'm not entirely sure how the Zerg player plans on finishing all of this off. No! Hero Marine, that's like the only thing you can't afford doing. Oh, man. He was like a good 50 supply up on his opponent, at least as far as army went, right? Well, I'm not exactly I'm not exactly sure what the what the number was, but that was some cost efficiency right there. We needed those godlike splits on the creep in order to uh, negate that, and now all of a sudden maybe Dark has a chance to push this back. 2-2 is done here for the Zerk, which is huge. Darren did start up 2-2, but like I mentioned, it's quite late. Which means that, uh, yeah, for now, the Zerk is going to be quite a bit more powerful with those Zerklings and Banelings. And Dark, even though it felt like he was up with his back against the wall, seems to now create a little bit of breathing room for himself once again. Alright. Darren, by the way, has decided to go for a ton of additional production on three bases. 
Seed Shank on the high ground actually being very annoying. 21 kills in total. Anyways, this is, for all intents and purposes, a three base Terran all in. I think he could have won it, man, if he microed those Marines at the appropriate moment. Ugh. He's still in a good spot, don't get me wrong. But I'm a little bit concerned for the upgrade situation here. It's still gonna be like another minute or so until those upgrades for the Terran players will kick in. Okay, this time around. Not gonna blow up the entire mineral line. And once again, Dark is just going non-stop counter-attacks. This reminds me a lot of the way that uh, Raynor uses to play, right? Or used to play, rather. He, he still does a lot of run buys, but... Whenever you saw Raynor play like two years ago, there would always be a group of Zorklings on the other side of the map, even if he couldn't defend at home. <laughs> I feel like this is maybe a little bit too many units committed to the counter-attacks, but apparently Dark's like, nah, it's fine. I have a much smaller army than the Terran has on my side of the map, but I'm sure my creep will take care of it. This time around, the Banelings are gonna roll into the Marines instead. Siege Tank here gets around the two. Okay, looks like a, a couple of the bio units also ended up getting killed right here on the creep. The tanks though on the high ground are really getting some work done. Still, only a handful of SCVs. Once again, I really do want to compliment Hero Marine here. He loses a lot of the... He loses a lot of the Marines here, but all things considered, I mean, he it did lose like 15 Marines in, or sorry, 15 of those SCVs in one big hit. But overall, he's been defending these Ling Bane run buys relatively well, and obviously, it's not like these units are free for the Zerk player either. The main issue right now, though, that I'm seeing here for our Terran is that the main base is starting to run out of money. Natural also is starting to run dangerously low. There's no fourth command center here. Obviously, you can lift up the main and send it elsewhere, but that's going to be extremely difficult to defend, especially with these non-stop counterattacks. Speaking of which, once again, Zerklings are ready to run into the natural expansion. Links and Banes over at the third base. At the same time, Terran is pushing onto the creep. The Koreans uh, are trying their very best. And now that Baling Nest! No, dude. Uh, okay, now the Baling Nest is gone here for the Zerk. Zerk is going for the 3-3 upgrades. Apparently, he bought a Hive somehow, some way. Okay, once again, though, the links are inside of the base. There's action all over the map. No energy anymore on these medevacs, so those marines are gonna have to pick up and get on out of there. 44 SCVs end up going down, but the Zerg player is also taking a tremendous amount of damage. Only 20 workers remain right now for Big Gape, which is a bit of a problem, since he still hasn't cleared up these, uh, these Zerglings either. I mean, he does still have Triple Orbital Command. Triple Orbital, or triple orbital Command actually deals a lot of damage, but those, <laughs> those links, man... Yeah, those links. Now he's got Burrow as well, which is one of those upgrades I've been saying for years. We should see way more often. Now the Zerklings are burrowed right there inside of the mineral line. Air Marine probably thinks it's safe because he can only look at one thing at once. Probably doesn't know that uh, the links are still there. Okay, finally the fourth hatchery here at the 12 o'clock position ends up going down. All of the Marines, though of the Terran are on the other side of the map, right? I mean, there's a couple here that just popped out of the barracks, but I'm a little bit concerned for them. Can Hero Marine win with the leftover army that he's got? Why did he start up Adrenal Glands? Are you kidding me, Dark? By the way, triple hatchery instead of the main base? Not something we normally see, but I really quite like it. I don't know why he's going Adrenal Glands. I think at this point, all he needs to do is just defend the next push. All he needs to do is just clear up these units, and he's gonna try and just run at him. All right, I don't know exactly if this is the best move, but apparently Dark has decided that this is what needs to be done. A couple of Banelings probably wouldn't have hurt, but, uh... Hey, he saw an opportunity and he jumped on it. These Medivacs are now basically without energy. Two Command Centers remain. Eight SCVs in total. Dark doesn't have that big of an army, though. It's still 46 army supply right now for the Terran versus 34 from the Zerg. 3-3 is finishing up very soon. Oh my god. Dude, I don't know if Zerk can clean this up. It comes down to the micro here against these Banes. He's target firing down the cocoons. Oh my god, he's gonna be able to pick up all of the Banes as they come out. Yeah, they, they didn't finish. Couple of Marines over there get surrounded by Zerklings. Speaking of links, they're also instead of the natural of the Terran player. Oh my god, this is a close game. I have no idea who's actually winning right now. No way. Is Gabe actually still pulling this off? I think he may actually very well be, be still pulling this off. Uh, looks like a command center was killed during all of this, although that may have been a little while ago, but I actually, actually, I don't actually see right now uh, a way for Dark to clear out all of those marines. He can't really afford any scans at this point either, although he does want to land the command center apparently. You can't actually scan without it. That's another base gone. 
Minerals are nowhere to be seen anywhere inside of the main base either, so Zerk is gonna have to evacuate down towards the low ground. Okay, apparently this widow mine over here killed one of the leftover very precious marines, but also took down a couple of the Zerklings in the process. That's now the second Bailing nest that we've seen gone down. There's actually Bailing over here, Burrowed. There were a couple of Bailing over there, Burrowed. Is there enough right now for the Terran player to get rid of those units? I don't think there are. Oh my god, I don't think there's enough Marines. Woo! That game number one. So sick. Both players definitely had plenty of opportunities there to win. The multitasking was off the charts, though. Obviously, uh... You may think, oh my god, why didn't Hero Marine look at the Marines, right, while, you know, the Banelings were rolling forward. And the reason for that is because Zerk was hitting him at the natural as well as the third base at the same time. There were a couple of big Marine explosions um, that, yeah, really ended up costing Hero Marine there quite a bit. I also do want to, once again, though, emphasize how valuable Burrow was in that game, right? So you can get Burrow at Hatchery Tech. It's 100 minerals, 100 gas. Although you probably can't really afford it at Hatchery Tech. Once you get up to like 3-4 base saturation though, it's one of those upgrades uh, that you can just kind of get. Because it's not really that expensive. And every single time the Terran is, is forced to use a scan because they don't have detection, that is a mule, right? That could have been a mule. So a mule's mined for like 300 minerals or so. I don't really know exactly what the number is. Some people say like 270, some people say like 350, I don't really know. Anyways, what I'm trying to get at is that as soon as your opponent scans once, Burrow's already worth it, right? And Dark ended up killing so many more of those SCVs because of, you know, the Zerklings that were burrowed in those mineral lines. And then obviously at the very end, he burrowed a couple of Banelings after forcing Hero Marine to lift off all of his orbital commands. So you can't actually use the scan ability that the command center has when it's an orbital unless it's landed on the ground. And since there were Zerklings inside of the main base, Hero Marine didn't have that luxury. Either way, we find ourselves right here in game number two on Blackburn. Excited to see where this series is gonna go, because that was that was very close. And honestly, I I think that should have been a Hero Marine win. I think that should have been a Hero Marine victory. If he, you know, was just paying a little bit closer attention there to his main army. I mean it's easy for me to say that, right? I play nowhere near this skill level. But there's no denying that uh, we saw some really, really big marine detonations with a few Banelings killing like 20 marines at once. We saw that like three times. Plus he lost those 15 SCVs or so to like two Banelings as well. Um, the explosions right there didn't really go in favor of the Terran player. And uh, if like literally one of the three that we saw didn't happen, and I think there may have been a couple as well that I didn't catch while observing this game. But I'm pretty sure if we would have defended like one or two of those a little bit better, the game would have had a, a very different ending. Either way, doesn't anymore, or it doesn't really matter anymore. What's done is done. Injects in both bases. Huh. Interesting. So once again, six Zerklings. Injects in both bases, which means that there's not going to be a creep tumor here. Um, don't know if that was a mistake. I doubt it, but sometimes you can kind of go on autopilot. Where you just kind of inject the bases. I actually think going for the Creep Tumor in the Natural is a little bit better. Because right now, I mean, I'm pretty sure the, the Larva are going to be popping off. And now he can't actually afford spending the Larva. Right? Like, how many Larva does he still have? Yeah, he still has two leftover Larva. Eh. I'm not sure. Maybe it's fine. I guess you can spend the Larva, but... It's going to be kind of tricky to uh, defend follow-up pushes. Oh, that's why. Okay, it's not a mistake. So Dark went for a double inject. This is something Hero Marine definitely picked up on as well. And apparently the re- wait. Did he just go Burrow? I thought I saw Burrow right there for like a split second on the production tab. I'm not sure. Either way, Zerkling speed is no longer being researched if he even started it in the first place. I think he may have and counseled it. I'm not actually entirely sure, but he's going for a Roach War and a second gas. But he's still adding on some drones as well, so it's- mm. This is kind of weird. So normally if we see a Roach Warren this early, so this was like 320 Roach Warren, we see it because Zerg wants to go for a push, right? A timing attack. But if you want to go for a timing attack, usually what you do is you save up some money so you can actually afford making roaches, right? In this case, he can make four, but he could have been able to... I don't know, make like 12, maybe, at this point, if he wouldn't have added on so many additional workers. 
Maybe this is also... Hmm. Usually, like, if you see roaches really early on, maybe this is gonna, like, kind of trick Hero Marine as well. Where he's like, oh god, there's a roach. This has to be an all-in right now. Because this is also something Dark does regularly. So maybe he looks at this uh, right now and, like, panics a little bit. Eh, looks like he isn't. Nah, dude. Hero Marine. A stoic man. Doesn't really care. He's gonna be forced to keep those Hellions at home, but that's not too surprising. On the back of this, by the way, Dark is just making only workers and a lair. Still no Zerkling speed. Okay, so here's that Banshee that I was talking about. Yeah. It is almost kind of feels to me like Hero Marine is like, ha ha, ha ha. He's going, he's going Roaches. Perfect. He wants to go for a push. It's never going to work out. All right. Yeah, so that was a little bit anticlimactic. Not entirely sure why I decided to go for... I think it's a mind game. That's the only thing that really makes sense here to me. Either way, uh, there's five queens available. Cloaking is done right here as well for that, uh, that Benshee. This time around, though, the lair was a bit quicker. So Dark is going to be able to go for the Overseer Cocoon. That means he's going to have some mobile detection here as well. Would love to see actually one of the Benshees going into the main base. I mean, he has got two, right? Yeah, he does have two. I would love to see this Benshee going into the natural... Or, sorry, into, like, the natural order main base. Either way, all the roads apparently lead to Rome. Terran's once again gonna go for the standard approach that we saw in the previous game as well. Unsurprisingly, Hero Marine seems to be one of those guys that has a build and then he sticks to it. Makes you a bit predictable, though, so I wouldn't mind seeing him mixing it up a little bit more. Like, for example, what Dark is doing. So Dark is going for one of the classic builds. So whenever like players first start playing StarCraft and they ask what build should I play as Zerk, this is the build I recommend. Maybe a slightly different approach, but the idea is basically the same. You go 66 workers, which is enough for 3 base saturation here as Zerk. Then you go Roach Speed, plus 1, plus 1, and you push uh, when you have enough army. So, we'll actually see if Dark pushes right when Roach Speed and 1-1 finishes, or if he's going to wait until he maxes out first. This is one of those pushes that if you do it well in the lower ends of the ladder, it's just going to instantly win you the game. Yeah, he's just making non-stop roaches. So, this is this is a classic push. This is the one... You know, sometimes people ask, hey, Loco, do, do people actually play that build at the pro level? It's, it's not super common, but it gets whipped out every once in a while. So 1-1, one, one, Roach Speed, plus 1, plus 1. Or I already said that. <laughs> but Roach Speed and 1-1, one, one, Roach Ravager. Just a whole lot of units. He's got a lot of gas right now too. Wouldn't be surprised if he adds on a bunch more Ravagers here. And this is going to be one hell of a push. That being said, Gabe obviously has picked up on this. So, he's got himself... How many siege tanks are we on? Just two? Ugh. I'm actually a little concerned. Is this... I mean, that's... There's still some Marauders there in the mix as well, which is not bad. 1-1 one, one is finishing up as well for the Terran, which is also huge. He's got Combat Shield, Concussive Shells is gonna finish up, I think, in time for this battle as well. Hmm. Alright, nah, I think he's gonna be fine. That being said, wouldn't have minded seeing, like, four siege tanks. Either way, here we go. Zerk coming in from as many angles as possible. A couple of bunkers here set up as well. Siege tank over there that just reinforces this. Comes in from the back. Couple of corrosive bows though. Connect to a huge chunk of that bio army. Not really what is supposed to happen, but I think that Hero Marine may still have enough. Yeah, no roaches left over to tank for those Ravagers. Ravagers have less hit points than, uh, than the roaches do. They're quite a bit more vulnerable. And it looks like Hero Marine does defend it, but... You can imagine, right, if you're doing this in like... I don't know. I do, this I do this push all the time in, in all of my games. Um, especially on like Blackburn and Beckett Industries and Oxide Alley. Uh, it works just fine. Grandmaster League actually just started today. With the new StarCraft 2 season. And it works at least. Like I'm currently sitting at like rank 48. Um, on the NA server. And these builds work just fine and oftentimes just straight up winning me the game. So, you know, if, you, if you're if you looking for a build, I highly recommend it. Guys like, like Hero Marine can defend it, even though it seems like a less than optimal situation for him. Uh, but that's because he's Hero Marine, right? And he's, you know, one of the best Terrans in the world. Okay, so now it gets a bit awkward, though. So here's the thing, right? 
Darren is going to be able to continuously get 2-2, which is great. He starts it up pretty quickly as well, prioritizing the plus 2. It hurts me a little bit when you see one of the upgrades being bought and they're only getting the carapace or, or like, I guess the marine armor upgrade. Uh, the attack upgrade is way more important. Uh, but here's the thing. Terran has an armory, right? So here's the armory. It enables plus two, plus two. But most importantly in this scenario, it also enables three, three. Zerk, in order to go into three, three, so he's currently researching two, two, uh, needs a hive. So he's going infestation pit right now, and then he's going probably for a hive as a follow-up. The problem is that once Terran finishes 3-3, which is pretty much always going to be quicker than the Zerk will finish up their 3-3, Roaches and Ravagers just get absolutely murdered by Marines and Marauders when they have their, you know, maxed out upgrades. So there's going to have to be a transition here from Dark, I think. Either that or like a 2-2 all-out assault. He could go into Hydras, he could go into Lurkers, he could try and transition to Banelings, but it's awkward because Banelings don't, yeah, they don't benefit from those, you know, those same upgrades. So I think he's going to go Lurkers. That makes a little bit of sense. But I'm starting to be a little bit worried here for the... Yeah, the South Korean Zerk. Okay. Roaches and Ravagers are also relatively supply heavy. So even though right now, supply-wise, we're at 120 Zerk army... Uh, in a head-up battle or like a straight-up battle, the Terran units will absolutely smash uh, the Zerk units. So he's gonna go for the Lurker then, by the way. That makes sense. Lurkers and... Ooh. <laughs> Lurkers and, uh, and Hydras benefit from the same upgrades as the Roaches and the Ravages do. Dark trying to go for some lucky corrosive Biles. Not happening. Gabe's a little bit too good for that. So there's the three. Start it up right away. Huge. Okay. Tunneling Claws is coming up for the Roaches. Hmm. Oh god. Well, this is what I'm talking about. Once the bio units start fighting this, it's incredibly... Incredibly good. I actually love what Hero Marine is doing here as well, pushing. I mean, he could wait until 3-3 is done. But the problem is that at that point, Terran's gonna be... Like, at that point, like, he's gonna have to fight Lurkers, right? And if you continuously continuously fight here, it's gonna be hard for the Zerg player to transition. Now the Siege Tank were a little bit late when it comes to sieging up. Looks like the Zerg player though decided to run there after just landing a few corrosive biles. Plus the infantry armor also started. So this is this is where like Maru and Clem would go for drops, right? This is where they would be all over the main base. And you can kind of see what I mean here for Hero Marine. He's just <laughs> parade pushing to this one location. I like this. So tunneling claws for the roaches allows them to burrow on the ground. And it's really good if you want to buy time. Because Terran is going to have to address this. Like he, he has to respect these units. It's not like he can just, you know, ignore them, right? And this usually buys a bunch of time for the Zerg player to make transitions. For example, to Vipers or Lurkers or in this case, I guess 3-3 upgrades. I'm not entirely sure if I agree with that one. Either way, Zerk once again coming in from a couple of different angles. Trying to get some corrosive Biles down. He's really banking on the Biles dealing damage. But so far, Gape is stepping out of those. We do have the Adaptive Talons upgrade. Which is the Burrow Speed upgrade for the... Um, for the Lurkers. At this point, there's no Lurkers yet though. He's going to go for the Seismic Spines upgrade now too, which is the Lurker ranged upgrade. Once he gets Lurkers out, pushing this back is going to be way easier. Now look at how Marauder heavy this is. 20 Marauders, only 12 Marines. Don't know if I like Liberators in the mix here, to be honest, but... The problem is though, right? Don't you just make, if you can, yeah, as many Lurkers as possible. Lurkers are going to be so good. Hero Marine is trying to create a chokehold right now on these bases of the Zerg. I would love to see drops, man. I feel like there's so much potential going for drops in these outer bases. I guess I guess at that point, Hero Marine is scared of being overrun. That's yeah, just not his way of playing. Okay, now there's Lurkers out. Dark has bought a lot of time. Not that many Lurkers yet. But you can't really disrespect the Lurkers very well. Eh, Zerk army is dwindling, though. Zerk army is dwindling. 
He's got a bunch of gas in the bank right now. Wouldn't be surprised if these additional Hydras that he's making right now all get turned into Lurkers. Okay, that's sloppy. It's not what you want to see. Lurkers right now, though, are part of this engagement. You can see immediately that Terran army is dropping. That being said... Yep. Your Marine has enough army to continue pushing forward. And while I feel like if Dark would have been able to get another, like, 30 seconds... He probably would have had enough to push this army back. Hero Marine chose his strategy, and it worked out brilliantly. So now we have ourselves a series. Next game is going to be on Oxide. Another pretty good Roach Ravager map. But you can kind of see from that previous game why Roach Ravager can be really difficult to play. I mean, usually when I play Roach Ravager right, I will end up overstaying my welcome and taking like two Siege Tank shells to the face on all of my Ravagers and then everything dies. Um, Dark didn't do that, but even when you don't do that, right? Even when you control uh, your Roaches and Ravagers really well, that transition away from Roaches and Ravagers is super awkward. So you could alternatively go into like melee upgrades and then Link Bane as a follow-up, which is quite a bit faster than going for the Lurkers. But, eh, I don't know. It's tricky. You could also go like Triple Evolution Chamber and go like Roach Ravager Link Bane. But that's really expensive. I don't know what the best move is. I guess the Hydra Lurker transition makes the most sense. But um, yeah, Hero Marine knew exactly what was going on. He didn't let him get. He didn't let himself get distracted there by the burrowed roaches too much, right? It's really tempting at that point when you've been pushing for like three minutes to just create like a little bit of space to breathe and just pull the entire army back. Uh, but Hero Marine used the reinforcements there to clear out the couple of. Well, it was like a couple. It was like 15 roaches or something burrowed at the third base. Uh, he calmly and collectedly, yeah, just uh, took care of those with his reinforcements. He ate a couple of SCV losses here and there, but he didn't let go of the pressure, which is huge. Alright, so now we're on Oxide. This is a good map for Terran, usually. Although I say that, Zerg players have actually not been hating this map too much. Let me actually have a quick look. Uh, so Oxide, Liquipedia, they keep track of all of the pro games that are being played in StarCraft and the win-loss ratios. Um, so this map, okay. We're currently for a sample size of 645 games played at the pro level. Um, at Terran winning 366 of those. So that comes down to about 57% of the pro games being played on this map of Terran versus Zerk go in favor of the Terran. So that's still a, uh, a pretty significant advantage for Terran. Zerk versus Protoss has a win rate for Zerk of 48.4%. And Protoss versus Terran a win rate for Protoss of 46.6%. So what I'm trying to get at is that this map is pretty good for Terran. <laughs> Terran does not seem to mind playing this map. So once again, six Zerklings. Ooh, he really wanted to get this around there. Not happening. Gabe's a little bit too good. I like the way that Dark plays this game, though. Dark never really seems very build order focused. I'm sure he does have like certain builds in mind, but he always kind of feels to me as like a, a free flowing Zerk, where he just, you know, played the game so much where he knows the rules and now he breaks them. It's nice. It's cool to see. Hero Marine, very stoic in his approach, it seems, right? He's got the build that he likes, although in this game he's actually mixing it up. This is the biggest mix up we've seen Hero Marine go for so far. Rather than going for the third command center at like, you know, this point in the game, he's gonna go for the starport first. This does mean that the benchies are gonna be out a little bit quicker. If Dark once again goes for the 1-1 opener, so he goes really quick double evos, um, he's gonna be kinda lacking some detection, right? And on this map, I mean, the queens have to cover quite a lot of terrain before they can actually, uh, yeah, defend all of the different bases. So once again, really quick Roach Warn here. Hmm. Interesting. So he's gone for the Roach Warren once again at like 3... 320. And skipping link speed entirely. No, actually, never mind. <laughs> that was the previous game. So what, like, this is what I mean. Why is he going link speed now? And he's skipping it in the previous game. Like, at least in the earlier stages of it. I don't understand. Like, what's the, what's the point? So he's still... Now he only makes three Roaches. It's once again a Benchy opener. Unsurprising. Yeah, I don't know. I think going for the link speed, by the way, is the smart thing to do. I 
I like watching Dark play, man. He always, uh... Yeah, the European Zerg players are obviously really good, if not better than Dark. But I feel like Dark strategies work really well in my own games. So, for example, right? Um, remember, like, those... I think it was Zest versus Dark that I casted a couple times, where he went for a 12-pool opener. Now, I'm personally, if you've been watching my stream over the last few months, you probably know uh, that I'm a big fan of the 12 pool opener against Protoss. The main reason for that is that you don't really die to, like, proxy. Ooh, actually hold that thought for a little bit. You don't really die to, like, proxy gateways or cannon rush. I don't like this, man. Yeah, this wasn't that good. You don't really die to, like, proxy gateways or cannon rushes or anything like that, right? Now, one thing that I was doing in my games is that I was going for really quick gases as a follow-up to rush out zerking speed and one of the things i noticed from dark is that he just stuck around on slow zerklings for way longer than i was comfortable with and he would make like 20 slow zerklings while still not getting zerking speed and it kind of blew my mind a little bit because we never really see that and I've, I've been doing that in my games over like the last two weeks or so and it's been an absolute massive game changer it turns out you have like an additional 300 minerals when you delay your gases and that allows you to get, like, two more queens out. Now, I mean, you can probably imagine how much a difference having five queens is opposed to, like, three queens, right? Like, it's 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 very huge. And even though, like, link speed is going to be a bit later, it seems to be just fine. Anyways, just a little anecdote, I suppose. But what I'm trying to get at is that I feel like Dark always plays the game a little bit differently than other top-tier Zerks. It's fun. So this is a six-minute lurker, then. So Dark is showing the same opener to his opponent this time around. Although, you know, this time around with Link Speed, but I don't think Hero Marine is really going to take that into account too much. But then he is rushing out a Hive. He's rushing out a Lurker Den. So this is a 6-minute Lurker Den, 6-minute Hive. I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, it feels to me like... Hair Marine is probably going to once again assume the same push as in the previous game. So the 1-1 one, Roach one Speed kind of thing, right? That we that we saw there. That's not what's going to happen here. Dark grabbed the fourth base and he's going to get the gases right away. So he definitely wants to go Heavy Lurker right from the get-go. Can you go for a Lurker timing? Is that a thing? Can you like rush out... Can you rush out like a bunch of Lurkers and then get some work done? I don't know what you would do with him. Like, even if you get the Lurker upgrades really quickly, can you use them aggressively right away? I'm not sure. So Hive is done at this point. What are we doing, Dark? The reason, by the way, why I'm focusing so much on Dark here is because Gape is doing the exact same build that he's done every game so far. So now there's going to be some of you that are like, Ah, Loco! Why are you only talking about the Zerk? <laughs> it's because we've seen him do the same thing now. Three games in a row. Come on. He's going to go for a CC. He's making additional, you know, more of the same units. So he's rushing out a couple of Vipers? I thought maybe he would rush out... Mm, so you need Hive Tech in order to make Vipers, right? You also need Hive Tech in order to get the Lurker Den upgrade. I thought maybe he would want it to get those Lurker Den upgrades a little bit quicker. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Is he going to go for a push with Roach, Ravager, Lurker, Viper? Again, not sure. This Terran army is going to get decimated, though. There's no way, Gabe. Here, Marine, you're not going to be able to push into that, my man. It's not going to happen. He's going to scan and then see five lurkers. <laughs> He's like, wait a second. He probably looks at the clock right now. Like, wait a second. Have I been sleeping for two minutes? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, it's only the eight-minute mark. Huh? Yoinks. Yoink. Yoink, yoink. Yoink, yoink. Those Vipers getting some really nice abductions off. Abducting the Siege Tanks into the Lurker range. There's not that much of a mobile army, though, for the Zerg player. So, yeah, Lings, obviously, with, without upgrades, are just going to get absolutely decimated. Hydra's de desperately run for life as well, but I think there's enough Roaches here left over for the Zerg player to clean this up, especially now with reinforcements coming out. Parasitic Bombs? No? Probably didn't have energy for it. So Parasitic Bomb on the Medivex makes a lot of sense to me, right? 
So he's using the Queens right now for transfusions as well. <laughs> Keeping the Lurkers alive for as long as possible. Okay. Heroine is gonna finally secure the fourth base. Another siege tank right there, got abducted. It's not gonna be able to get out. Hmm. And now all of a sudden we're talking like a Ling Hydra Lurker Viper Force. What do you even make as Terran against that? Well, usually you go... There seems to be like, broadly speaking, three approaches that Terran players go for. Either it's Ghosts, right? Very good. I think that's actually the best option if you have the economy for it. You can go Liberators, which is quite uncommon these days. Or you can just make more of the same and focus a little bit more on Marauders. That seems to be what, like, for example, Bion goes for quite a bit, where he's just making loads and loads and loads of Marines, Marauders, Medivex, and Siege Tanks and stuff. And that can kind of work well, but I think Ghosts just make the most sense. The problem is that Hero Marine is only just now getting four base eco up, and Ghosts are really freaking expensive. He's making a couple of them right now. I think it makes sense. Okay, yeah, so when I first saw Dark going for the Hive, I thought it was going to be for a counter attack or like a timing push, but that's not what's going on. He just tried to get to the strongest army he can make the fastest way possible. And this is like a, a, a terrifying army right now. Dark trying to get a tech advantage. Loses all the roaches right there on the left side of the screen, but it's roaches. He doesn't need those anymore. He's replacing them at this point with like stronger units. They were more or less like a stepping stone. One Lurker over here being obnoxious. Main force, though. Uh, once again, gonna run back. Okay. These guys are going extremely close, though, right? Like, they're, they're, they're very closely matched, is what I'm trying to say. Not bad. Okay. Adding on more Lurkers. He's already at plus three, yeah. What an interesting style that Dark is playing. Showing very different games, three games in a row. Kinda nice. Okay. Problem is that the, the Lurker count is so much higher. We're at 19 Lurkers with more coming up. The Lurker count is so much higher than the Ghost count that at this point I'm not entirely sure how the Terran player can break any of these positions. He's, yeah, he's using like the, the lurkers at this point like siege tanks, right? Where like you unseach the ones in the back, you move them a little bit closer. Then you move the, the next ones in the back, move them a little bit closer. And you create like a chokehold on the Terran player. Third base is now completely evacuated. There's a couple more orbital commands right here for Hero Marine, which is normally what Terran players do at this stage in the game, but I don't know if I like it. Okay. Well, this angle is pretty good for the Terran, though. Getting quite a lot of service area done. SCVs now also pulled into the mix, but there's so much Zerg. <laughs> what a... What a what a game. So, usually in StarCraft 2, we see players pushing for one of two advantages, right? So, usually they will push for an economy advantage or for an army advantage, right? What Dark ended up pushing for in this previous game was a tech advantage. He didn't have that big of an army, he didn't have that big of like an economy either, but he was just tacking up like an absolute madman while not dying to Terran pushes, and then eventually his army was so strong that Terran just kind of got swiped off the map. And that is not really a playstyle we usually see in StarCraft 2. Huh. That was really cool. That also seems extremely difficult to play, by the way. Dark is... Dark is a fun player to watch, man. Alright. Let's see what Mr. Hero Marine does in this particular game. Hero Marine, by the way, part of Mouse Sports since, I think, like, 2011. I used to be on Mouse Sports as well for a couple years myself. And, um, yeah, he was on there too. Like, years ago. Years and years and years ago. And he still is with them to this date, which is awesome. Hero Marine, by the way, also cleaned up his nickname. So, once upon a time, his nickname was something like... I think it was like... I think it was this? I think this is the way he used to capitalize his name. Which always bothered me to no end. Especially because like, you know, it's like alternating and then the... Ah, uh, this is... I can't. Maybe this is just the Dutch in me being really annoyed at this, but... Anyways, now he's just... 
capitalizing two letters, which are, yeah, I like quite a lot better. Looks clean. Uh, Dark, by the way, I believe he's on Dragon Phoenix Gaming. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's on Dragon Phoenix Gaming indeed. Although he's not in their clan right now on this server. I'm not sure why. So he's on uh, the same team as Cure, Hero, Rogue, and Zest. Which is a killer team, by the way. Like, that is... <laughs> Those are some good teammates to have. Either way... I'm excited to watch the GSL Grand Finals. If I'm not mistaken, actually, if you're watching this on the day that the video goes up, uh, it's being played tomorrow. I believe. Either that or this weekend, but I'm pretty sure it's tomorrow. <sighs> Usually they're broadcasted on YouTube, so... I'd recommend you go check it out. Standard openers once again from both players. Quick third hatchery right here for the Zerg. Let's see what Terran decides to go for. Oh, would you look at that? The same build as we've already seen. <laughs> Two times. <laughs> Let me make a guess. I think he's gonna make Benchies. <laughs> Pretty sure there's gonna be the factory on the ta or on the reactor here in a second. Then there's gonna be a starport, yes. And then this barracks over here is gonna make a uh, tech lab right in this location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tech lab, tech lab, tech lab. Tech lab! Tech lab! <laughs> Ta there he goes! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> now he's gonna switch it over, go for the cloaking upgrade. I mean, this is apparently what Terran players do right now. It's their, uh, their bread and butter. Their meat and potatoes. Their kartoffel. Und, uh, bratwurst. I don't know. <laughs> their schnitzel. Because <laughs> he's German. Anyways. Yeah, so this is apparently what we do now. So for a while we saw Liberator openers as the default. Apparently Liberators are no longer cool. Benchies are my new best friend. Although they're also my old best friend as a Terran. <laughs> Hero Marine actually going for a pretty quick extra supply depot right there on the low ground. Which is kind of interesting. Oh, dude, there's a little mind game going on here. Okay, so... Can I, can I nerd out about this for a second? I think there's not really going to be that much interesting stuff happening here. So, if you're a Zerg player and you're going up against a Terran player who's going triple CC opener, you will not see a Supply Depot as part of the natural wall-off at the 4 minute mark. So at this point, Dark sees that there is a Supply Depot in the wall-off at the 4 minute mark and he knows this isn't going to be a triple CC opener. At least that's probably what he's putting his opponent on. Because of that, he's going for a lair, rather than the double evo chamber upgrades. It turns out Hero Marine is going for a triple CC opener, because he skipped the second supply depot right here, on the top of the ramp. And of course the reason why you don't need a depot at 4 minutes, is because you would get the supply uh, from your, uh, your third command center. I hope that makes some sort of sense. It's a very small detail here, but... Yeah, it's making it's yeah, it's forcing Dark into probably a different playstyle that he may want to play. Not that it really matters, because this is still the build that uh, Raynor plays, for example, as like his default. He goes for a very quick lair, quicker uh, detection, quicker mailing speed, and all that. It's not a huge difference, but you know, figured it is worth sharing. It's kind of nice. Triple CC opener while still going for the depot on the low ground by four minutes. All right, this time around is going to be Mutaling Bane right here for Dark. The classic style. Once again, like, four games in, we're still seeing a different approach right here from the Zerg. I love it, man. I, I think that's really a sign of, like, greatness in StarCraft, right? Being very flexible, not just having one go-to build. Like, if you're a ladder hero, having one build, totally fine, right? But as a pro player, I really think if you want to be at, like, the best level... Oh, this is cute. <laughs> he, knew the, he knew there was a creep tuber there, so he attacks the rock so he doesn't need to scan. Uh, but if you really want to be at the tippity top of the skill level, being flexible with multiple builds on multiple maps is super important, I think. Anyway. Dark going for the 1-1 upgrades right now once again. Banshees are going to try move in, but they're really not eh, going to get that much work done, I don't think. Alright. Mutaling Bane. Um, Mutaling Bane is fantastic when it's played really well. 
The problem is that Terran players are really good at playing against Mutaling Bane these days, especially at this level. So you can see Rodanin going for Siege Tanks. Hero Marine scanned right there, saw the Spire, which by the way was a great scan. Really important to pick up on that early, so you can switch to the Widow Mine production instead. It's still helpful to have maybe a few Siege Tanks out, but Widow Mines really should be the main goal right here as far as the splash damage goes. Obviously, the reason for that is that the, uh, oh, the Widow Mines, they can uh, hit the Mutalisks as well. The Mutas, in general, they are very fast to regenerate health outside of combat, but they're kind of like paper planes, you know? They're not really that uh, high in hit points. They have only 120 life, which is less than, like, a Medivac. A Medivac is 150. Metafacts don't really heal outside of combat, though, so that's a <laughs> big difference. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is that Mutas are really good to play if you're really good at the game. If you're mediocre at the game, you best lay off with Mutas. They're just... yeah, they, they reward players with 500 APM. If you're a pleb, like myself, and you struggle hitting very high APM numbers, you probably uh, want to forego Mutas against Terran. Because, like, ideally you keep moving them around, ideally you keep, like, flipping and flapping them all over the map. But that by itself takes, like, 200 actions a minute, and then you still have to do everything else. <laughs> if you look away for a split second, you might just die. And Hero Marine right here has been pushing back the creep. I like this a lot. Hellbats in the front, so that's the leftover Hellions from earlier. They've turned into Hellbats. They're soaking up some of the Baneling hits. Thor coming up right now, too, which I love. Oh. Thor coming up right now, which I love. So Thor's... They have Javelin missiles that deal splash damage. Terran players in general know that... Ooh, close. Uh, they know, of course, that Zerk in general clumps up the Mutas, right? So the Thor can get a lot of work done. Once again, though, this is just like in game number one. We see Dark going for those counterattacks. He's pushing over here as well. Looks like the Marines will be picked up. A huge Widow Mind connection there. But Dark found himself a little bit of breathing room, and he's got the fifth base right now secured as well. Terran's still on triple CC. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I think... Ooh, actually, hold up. Can I... I'm gonna back off a little bit more, I think. Yeah, okay, so that's what ended up happening here. So this is only, like, 15 seconds. Um... Mmm... So besides the fact that he, like, killed a bunch of SCVs... He also ended up killing the fourth command center. And that now puts Hero Marine in a very awkward spot. Not only did Dark clean up the army at home, he also killed his opponent's, you know, next step in this plan. So what do you do? Well, apparently he's gonna just start up the 4CC again. But this makes it a bit awkward right now for Hero Marine, because every follow-up move that he makes is gonna be a bit more of an all-in. But if he doesn't make follow-up moves, that creep is gonna get all out of control. Never count out a Terran player with Thors and Widow Mines, though. <laughs> One good hit with those on the Mutas can turn the tide of battle very easily. Okay, yeah, that's that's a desperation stim right there. That's Hero Marine thinking, I need to get them! Get the Mutalisks! You can see that he's starting to uh, feel the pressure a little bit. Bailings though, trying to get some work done. They're rolling by. Once again, Banelings... Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. Widow Mine right there getting a huge detonation off on a lot of the units, but it included the Marines. There is a Marine drop at the 6 o'clock position, but I don't like this, man. I do not like this at all for Gabe. So while this is all going on, Zerk is happily sitting at whatever he likes to do, right? He's going to two upgrades. He's getting himself even a sixth hatchery right now. He's spreading creep like a madman. And if you keep trading armies over here, you can keep doing exactly that. All of this is happening while Zerk has, like, 10 more workers, which is really not that much. I wouldn't mind seeing him go up to, like, 90 drones, but... Anyways, point I'm trying to make here is that Terran is up with his back against the wall. And that does not help. Metavex over here apparently also not getting a whole lot of work, uh, a whole lot of work done. Marines will be cleared out. Obviously, Metavex harass in general against Muta play is really hard. Now, he is securing the 4th CC. He is going to turn it into a planetary fortress as well. Drilling Claws is going to finish up. He is getting himself the 3-3 upgrades. Hero Marine is making the best of a tough situation, but this actually is still very doable. Okay. 
Gets himself some uh, some counter-attack damage done as well. Widow Mines are apparently dropped into different bases. It's a tough situation, but it's definitely playable. Romanticide is also a tough map when it comes to like pushing. So it's only it's only got a couple different attack paths, right? Uh, Zerk though is just gonna commit all of the resources over here. Most of the Terran units are over at the fourth base on the low ground, so that means right now that Zerk has got a lot more mobility. Once again, Bailing to try to roll into the mineral line of the SCPs get absolutely torn apart. Guess what? Dark's gonna back off and rinse and repeat. Hive's gonna finish up. That means he can go into his own 3-3 upgrades. I think there is a potential for a push once Hero Marine finishes up his own upgrades. I think that's probably gonna be one of his last ditch efforts. He could definitely make it happen though. Like those units don't 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 lose Marines now. No, you can't oh god, you can't afford losing Marines right, right now. I think if you I think if you wanna go for I think if you wanna go for a win this game, Gabe, you should try and put all of your eggs in one basket with 3-3 finishing up. That being said, Dark has been sitting at a solid 50 supply advantage for a long time. He's getting himself his own upgrades right now. Wouldn't be surprised to see Adrenal Glance coming up, maybe even Ultralisks. Ultralisks would be absolutely phenomenal against this army. Yep, there's the Adrenal Glance upgrade and there's the Ultralisk character. Okay, yeah, I, I think it makes a lot of sense. Another Thor will be built. Oh my god, that's just not that much Terran. Like, this army is so small compared to the Zerg. Now, it is fighting off creep, so maybe there's a potential for uh, a push. He does run some of the SCVs away, but still, there's way too much Zerg. Some Terran units on the high ground as well, but it's gonna cost the Planetary Fortress. And guess what? I guess Dark is gonna reinforce this with more Lings, more Banes, and more Mutilis. And Hero Marine knows it. There's no way that he can deal with all of the creep and all of the units that Dark is going to produce. And because of that, it is going to be the Zerk player who wins this best of five series 3 to 1. I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. If you did, hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. Other than that, I want to thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.